Spoke on Smithy here. You know what the worst thing about being trapped in a collapsed mine for months on end is? It's the boredom. I mean, you'd think a struggle for survival against the odds would be exciting. We'll probably be doing the talk show circuit if we ever get out of here. But it's so, so dull sitting around in the dark all day with only Tom for company. You think you have it bad. I have to do it with you for company. You sound really different today, Tom. Even your accent changed. Ah, my voice always sounds different when I come down with allergies. Wouldn't think there'd be anything a mile underground to be allergic to. Well, at least we've got the projector and this big box of films. Maybe there's something in here that can help with the boredom, if not with the allergies. Perfect. Here's an educational short called Boredom at Work, The Search for Zest. That does sound promising. I could use some zest. Ooh, a pretentious collection film. Bound to be good. Feels like we're falling into a washing machine. Part one was boring, so we skipped part two. Oklahomans know all about boredom. The director's shrink doesn't usually get such a prominent credit. Who knew general services included filmmaking? They'll take a stab at anything. They're big on middle initials. They needed three composers to systematically eliminate melody and arrive at the most boring possible music. The Mental Hygiene Division sounds like a dystopian propaganda organ. Well, Oklahoma is a dystopia. I wonder how many of these they made. Didn't they get bored? They did, but then they had to pick another film about the portal. My patience is circling the drain. Get on with it. Oh, Art's the opening shot. Boredom is this man's problem. That Boredom and two broken suit buttons. Boredom at play. Boredom at work. The solution? More more Nicotine. Upsetting. New Lotar Barlon's anti-boredom cigarettes. The door on the right is for the anorexic support group. Today, finally, acting at the suggestion of his family doctor, he's made an appointment to see a psychiatrist. And yet here on the threshold... He suddenly he remembers see. that boredom isn't in the DSM-5 and everybody's bored at work. Holding back. This going to a psychiatrist, is it really the right thing to do? Is boredom worth all this fuss? Can a psychiatrist really Does help? Does flagrant littering make life less boring? For you, such thoughts are a source of deep and disturbing... Is what he thought was boredom are really just a full bladder? ...add to the half-dozen other inner struggles already racked. He ponders where the contacts would be less boring than glasses. There's the battle between his love for the outdoors and the endless hours he spends chained to his desk. To keep him from boring the rest of the office. He's torn between a basic shyness that needs solitude and a job that makes him work with people. And here's the roof people jump off of when their job bores them to death. Hey, I can't see between any stars. How does work? this thing work? And his need for job security. Ah, he chained himself to his desk for security. At home. Any fight with his wife Loretta brings on guilt. Ah, he's bothered by having a far side character turns, for a wife. Conflict, Would you conflict, stop caressing yourself conflict. in a restroom mirror? Those inner struggles, they shake you. It's reached the point where he's no longer certain how he does feel. Or even Brains. But how to find out about your feelings? How do you rid yourself of the conflicts that breed tension and ultimately boredom? It's 20 minutes late what now. What when you personally face a psychiatrist with a problem like this one? What does he do? What does he say? Don't you feel like a fool? It's like each half of his face is you trying to sure. express something different. But 
here today, at last he takes the vital step. Oops, sorry ladies, I thought this was my psychiatrist's office. At last he acknowledges the importance of his boredom. You're Admit too late, the next help. patient is here, go away. Help in fighting it, help in his search for zest and ardor, those ever vital elements that make our lives worth living. If he's also searching for tacky lamps, he's in the right place. Well, that takes care of the statistics, Mr. Marriott. You have a 73% uh, chance of dying of boredom. What seems to be your trouble? You're the psychiatrist. You tell me. Sarcastic back to People eh? get confused about psychiatrists, Mr. Marriott. No one can tell you how to run your life. Except the Scientologists. I can help you scout out the roads, but you're the one who have to decide where it is you want to go. Now let's try again. What is it that's bothering you? Is it my mistake? The way you see it. Now that you mention it. What's bothering you? It's almost easier to tell what isn't. Sure, boredom's the issue. But the boredom. Into so the problem for people who have no problems. More cigarettes will fix anything, though. There's his relationship with his son, Kenny. Who bores him with giant airplanes and is trying to read the obituaries. With his wife, Loretta, it's gotten to the point of his not caring one way or the other. He considered spicing things up with strip poker, but was afraid he'd win. His friends and neighbors matter so little to him by now that he barely manages to stay polite. He manages to stay polite to with an annoying neighbor, won't leave. That's superhuman. Polite is boring. That's day. his trouble. He can't stand the people he has to deal with. Hunts excuses to be rid of. Still sounds normal to me. Even at night, boredom stays Even in his sleep, to traditionally sleep, the eventful part of the day. Hour after hour for some release from the emptiness of the day. Tried drinking yet? A therapist with a less boring no, office like might help. Thing. How long have you felt this way? And Too how long, long have you been months, staring at the ceiling? Years. I can't even remember when I really cared about anything. But back when you were a boy, though, oh, then, yes, things were different. So damn different. Actually, I was a girl, Why don't you give see? us an angle we can use. What did you enjoy doing most? The things a man remembers when there he thinks such a back. flattering angle. Happy times he knew when he was a kid. For you, there were those crisp Look, a hobo. Let's upwards. shoot him. Honey. He passed out drunk. Alone, out on the water. The joy of doing things with his hands, things his Shooting, cooking fish, sawing, saw anything board. violent is fun. How to overcome the stubbornness of machinery. How to hold a shotgun and lead a bird. How to kill mother and make it look like an accident. Crash, Jeez, bogged and lighten up. Dead. Maybe there's the clues we've been looking for, Hugh. No matter how bored a man is. He can break loose sometimes if he can zero in on the things that... I will kill you with my up. mind. You might even pass some of them on to Kenny. To Kenny. Wait, do I have a kid? Ever try working with him? I... Sometimes. Okay, not one much. time. Might not do any harm to think about it. You never know for sure what's going to help him, is it? Speaking to family? That's it. Too I hard. I'm out. I'll go ahead and clear that hour for the next 20 years. Doctor, this whole business has me all upset. You can, can you really see him emoting. Looks downright suicidal. A tranquilizer, perhaps. Horse tranquilizer, Medicine maybe? But let's wait a while. You may not need anything once you understand what's bothering you. All right. Come on, I'm bored. You've got to give me drugs. Home again. Throwing a ball against the wall two feet away is in the boredom Olympics. Like with Ken, the way Dr. Jeffers suggested. If only they could work together, build a doghouse, maybe. Only Might want to get dogs first. No, it's for Hugh to sleep in when Loretta is mad. Tension, trouble, flaring tempers. What started out to be a step in therapy for Hugh ends up as another Marriott family bomb burst. Because trying Boredom to treat is now recognized as the, the most common cause of child work. abuse. Progress is a thing you have to fight for. The slow, hard, painful way. Painful for the kid, anyway.
And yet Dr. Jeffers doesn't seem too upset the when he hears about a call and hears says it next turns him off. Just try something simpler, that's all. Like a hike. Uh, something that you both like to do where you can relax instead of fighting. But we can play with my gun together. It'll look like an accident. Dr. Jeffers Bolt. feels it's vital that you get to the true roots of his trouble. Symptomatic relief isn't enough. There needs to be thorough investigation of the ground from which his problems sprang, his feelings, his background. His insufficient his nicotine years, levels. The relationships with people that have helped to shape him. It's a long process. A painful process. You doesn't like it. A dozen times he's tempted to quit, and yet there's enough progress that he goes on. Suffering. It's less boring than feeling okay, so give it a try. There were actually so many explicatives in this segment that they had to mute it and play wacky music over it. Meanwhile, first chance he gets, he takes Ken hiking. And because Hugh's beginning to understand a little better about how to get along with people, it's at a time when Ken wants to go. No pressure, no forcing issues. But maintain dominance by waving a big stick. That's I'll right, Kenny. Grab moment. the barbed wire fence with your hand and try to climb some it. Of the happy hours of his own childhood, full of surprises, full of the pleasure. All now let's throw rocks at those cows. Away from pressures, away from conflicts. It's a thing he can share with Ken now. A thing that creates no tensions, makes no demands upon them. Just the oneness of father and son walking along the water's edge. Look, together. Daddy, I hit a frog. Kid must be developing Lou Gehrig's disease. What the wet clothes matter compared to the fun they've had? It's a good feeling for both of them. Until the dysentery sets in. But not in. for Loretta. What kind of a father would let his son fall in a lake? Doesn't he even know what the word responsibility he might means. Might be allergic to water. Drown. I don't and think it's one of those it's signs. Aliens. Of going to that Dr. Jeffers. Well, it's certainly not her idea of the right way for you to squander family money. Wait, that ugly palm had an entrance fee? Dr. Jeffers understands, though he does wonder about one thing. Why is it so important to you? Why is what important? Loretta's approval. Why do you feel you always have to do what she wants? Why don't you try to enjoy her Why? yelling at you? That's the kind of question that sets Hugh groping. Dr. Jeffers immediately answer. regrets causing Hugh to grope him. What about other husbands? Do they play it the same way Hugh does? There's Betty Evans. Paul won't even let her hold a job. Her days drag and Why not chain up Loretta in the basement? Cornelia Beard? She never knows where Claude is or when he'll be home. The way he cheats on her is a scandal. What I'm saying is have an affair. It'll make your life I less boring. Her husband won't let her have children. Too much bother, too much expense. So, Maxine is left empty and envious, unfulfilled. Well, what does that matter? She's a woman. And Paulette King, how she dreads those camping trips her husband drags her off on. So many great ideas for dominating my wife. Thanks, Doc. The outdoors, it's for the birds. The swarms of aggressive birds who Those keep chasing her inside. The same approach you do, do they? It's still no way to treat your wife. How should you treat her? Well, you know, a fellow ought to go along. Not push her around, that is. A woman deserves a little happiness. Even when she gets in her husband's way, interferes with what he wants personally. Okay, I guess at Mary some point I have to beat her. Oh, I agree, but there are other ways to look at it, aren't there? I guess so. But you don't buy them. Rebooting. Please wait. What about your folks? How did they see it? How had they seen it? For the first time, it dawns on Hugh that his attitudes, well, there's something he takes for granted. His mother saw to that, whether the issue was dirty nails or bad manners or sloppy clothes or not making enough money. Your son killed again? He's your son too. Here, go buy some acid to dissolve Especially the body. not making enough money. Sometimes, Hugh's I'm father would stalk out. But so whatever often. happened, there still wasn't enough money. Mm -hmm. 
bold patch cam. Could all that family trouble have influenced Hugh, conditioned him to accept his mother's idea of how a husband ought to act? The very thought's ridiculous to him, but Dr. Jeffers isn't so sure. I don't trust the narrator's version of what the doctor is saying. All right, so I'm all wrong. What about the girls you didn't marry? The girls I didn't marry? You mean my mistresses? Well, let's think about them, that's all. Maybe we can figure out uh, what made you back off. The girls Hugh didn't marry, like uh, Sue, for instance. Fun all the way, but sloppy as she was, what kind of a home would she keep? She reminds me of you, Bogdan. <laughs> Barbara was the hottest date in town. Too hot to make the right wife for a respectable man. He dumped her because she was too attractive. Judy? That's what he told like her. A million dollars. And the narrator bought Spent it. money that way, too. Too expensive. Winifred had ideas. Ideas so far out, they scared a man. Hugh suspected she was working with the feminist cabal to hang all men from lampposts. Sloppiness, passion, extravagance, nonconformity. Traits like that never did rate very high in your book, did they? What I'm saying oh, is you're kind of a jerk. Oh, you mean nobody ever married those girls? Now, wait a minute. You mean they did marry? It couldn't be that your mother set the standard. Only his dermatologist well, should ever get this close. Fun and excitement and sharp ideas, high hey, voltage, stop making funny faces in the camera and listen. Loretta? It finally dawns on you that, in a lot of ways, she's like his mother. Wasn't the expecting the sudden to, the Freudian twist. He He's not actually same. attracted to his and wife, it's not so a very it's okay. comfortable discovery. Besides all this business about Hugh's parents, it upsets him. Leaves him feeling worn and torn and guilty. And aroused. Again, Dr. Jeffers reacts. You know you're this a bad actor when the narrator Hugh's has to say you're reacting. Childhood. Your folks had their share of fights, all right. There's a place in marriage for fights. Especially for pro wrestling couples. Is your interpretation of their squabbles? After all, they didn't divorce, did they? And anyone who doesn't divorce is happy, right? Divorce? Right. Oh, no, matter of fact, when Hugh thinks back, there were even a good many moments of tenderness. Wild flowers his father would bring home to his mother. The way she'd make hot rolls. She fed him rolls. Or go, they were happy. Rolls. <laughs> the meal of kings. The long summer evenings they spent in the port swing, relaxed and happy. The cold winter mornings when they'd let you sneak into bed with them. So that they wouldn't have to have sex with each other. That proves their marriage was happy, right? By the time Dr. Jeffers is through, Hugh realizes that his past recollections have been on the selective side. Your whole life has been a lie. It's so much easier. Blame your troubles on your family, our teachers, the place we grew Jews, up. Jews, Illuminati, Elizabeth Instead of people. standing on our own two feet and fighting out our problems. Where Loretta's concerned, Hugh now sees what Dr. Jeffers is trying to get at. Devotion does not demand that you make yourself into a carbon copy of your wife, no matter how much you love her. But Mom said I should. Even in marriage, Hugh, a man has a right to be himself. You've got to be you. You? You have your own needs, your own desires. Face up to them. It's more than a right, it's a duty. So Loretta won't go along with that kind of talk? Well, maybe it's time she dropped by here for a visit. Narrator's calling her out. Time out for a bomb burst. When it's over, Dr. Jeffers manages to sneak in a few thought-provoking questions. Why is it so vital that Hughes nails be clean? Right up there with why is there something rather than nothing? Really sinful for a man not to care about bridge? Depends if he's a structural engineer. What's wrong with hunting and fishing? Who's hurt or even inconvenient? The retter is vegan. Time out again for sputtering. Weeks and weeks of sputtering. When it dies down, there's another question. A deeper, less symptomatic, more important question. What kind of a man was your father? Mrs. The doctor is relentlessly Loretta's Freudian. Father, it's hard for her to talk about him even now. A loud man, a harsh man, an aggressive man. He shaved when he felt like it. Shaving he without permission like is the mark of a monster. Insulted visitors right and left. What he wanted was what counted. 
And if that meant humiliating or outraging his wife, that was her hard luck. He even wore his tie loosely during his drunken rampages. He was a good provider, though, and he certainly bragged enough about it. Here, honey, it's a razor. I'll borrow it whenever I like. Oh, this totally makes up for humiliating me. And for our daughter being such a disappointment. Loretta's father taught her how husbands behave if they're given half a chance. Often she hated him. Swore she'd never let any man abuse her the way her father had her mother. Well, that got dark. Again, it's as it was with Hugh. Loretta saw her parents through the haze of her own distorted feelings. She forgot the nice things they did for each other, the happiness they knew together, remembered only the fragments that re her own ideas. Ideas too often Kids, born of a child's misunderstanding is okay if it's nice sometimes? in reality. Those attitudes, those ideas, she carried them over into marriage, clings to them still. A case in point? Well, she's always been impressed by Hugh's thoughtfulness, his consideration. And yet, the way he knuckles under disturbs her somehow. She misses her father's arrogant masculinity, his swagger, his decisiveness, even his violence. The times he put mom in the hospital, ah, oh, these were the days. Unconsciously, she holds Hugh in contempt for giving in to her, grows depressed and resentful at what she thinks of as his weakness. It's a warped viewpoint. And as Loretta begins to understand herself and Hugh a little better, she goes along with him more, accepts him as he is instead of trying to make him over. When, on impulse, he decides to take Kenny fishing, she puts a curb on her tongue. Murderer. Bridge tonight? Hugh plays if he feels like it. Goes to his workshop if he doesn't. It dawns on Loretta that she and Hugh fight more often. And somehow, that's actually a relief. Better by far than the dull, gray dreariness of Hugh's boredom. Dull, gray dreariness was the tagline for this film. As time goes by, it's obvious that he feels more alive, freer. But he's still got a target on his back. No, it doesn't. Finally, something. one night... Not tonight, you. I have an awful headache. Phew. I mean, Almost had to see like these two naked. Right. Hey, Morning. Saved by the cut. I'm sure the headache will pass in a few years, dear. This is as far as you're getting me, Marl. Sexy music. Hey, what's this? You know, lover boy, I'm beginning to wonder if you're not a lot more man than I thought. <laughs> Things begin to work out better between you and Kenny, too. There are fishing trips. Home workshop projects. Nights on the town together. Kenny's apathy fades. His grades come up. Finally, he even talked Hugh into having another try at finishing the doghouse. But still for not Hugh, getting a, a dog. moment. He sees now how important it is for him to work with Kenny instead of bossing him, to accept boy-level work instead of criticizing. All the time he feels better himself, more alive, more alert, more awake to the zest of living. Matter of fact, it's only on the job that he's still aware of tension. Wake up, Bogdan. There, if I well, have to watch this, so good. do you. He sees now that office duty isn't for him. His place is out in the field, on the construction end. And yet he can't afford to break away from Consolidated. Come right down to it, he really doesn't want to. Who could give up Dr. the zest of Consolidated Amalgamated Business that you make an effort to rouse more interest in his work by exploring the company thoroughly. Check into each department and its function. Get better acquainted with the man he works with as individuals. Discovery hates Learn them because at least that would be boring. Let them know his. Good ideas, all of them, they help. But no, Hugh, don't jump. Not enough. With 
every plan that crosses Hughes' desk, the old urge to get out into the field comes back. He wants to be out standing Finally, in the field. the truth to Dr. Jeffers. More and more, he's tightening up again, resenting his job, retreating from reality, back into his old habits of apathy and boredom. I understand. Do the folks down there know how you feel about it? About field work? <laughs> Who are you kidding? If you want to hold a job, you don't go around griping to the boss. You know what it. really makes the oh, scene sizzle? Really the what? Well, a rousing well, soundtrack well, those three well, guys collaborated well, on? He must be having those auditory hallucinations the again, Bob. Uh, chances are he's got a talent for it. Why hide it? Let your boss know that you've got an ability he's not using. Between the two of you, you might be able to figure out an angle. It's a new thought for Hugh. He hesitates, hedges, broods about it. Then one day, Consolidated awarded the contract to build a big new dam. Hugh's boss admits the project has him worried. The boss sits on the desk know, to Hugh. assert dominance. It's a good deal all around. But from the field end, those stresses are going to be some darn... I think the boss problems. is drunk. Ed, I just may be able to help you with that. You? On a field assignment, you, I'm the incompetent moron? Real good. Why, well, remember, I was in the field the day you hired Camping me. homeless in it. But I thought, uh, what about Loretta? I'll be doing the work, Ed, not Loretta. Sorry, we want I Loretta. I'd take a shot at it, Ed. I really would. Hugh is still grinning like a Cheshire cat. Are Cheshire cats Jeffers known for bad orthodontia? So that's the way it is, Doctor. I'll be out of town for a few months. How's Loretta taking? I gave her a choice. Either stay here or come along in a house trailer. He's coming. What about Kenny? We're dropping him off at the orphanage. So now might be a pretty good time to take you off therapy for a while. Could be. Because honestly, I'm getting pretty sick of you. Is there a cure for boredom then? It's called doing things. Hugh still isn't sure. Too many things depend on what you mean when you say cure. And what you mean when you say boredom? Slowly, painfully, you can learn to live a richer, fuller life. If only you'll be yourself. Unless your real Point self is boring. Resolve your inner conflict. Face the person that you really are. Only thus can you bring to a successful end your search for zest and ardor. Free yourself of apathy. And solve forever your problems of boredom at And work. get back to leering at the secretary like a good red-blooded American man. That was perplexing. It's like they had no idea what the word boredom meant. Perhaps they hadn't invented depression yet? Well, I'm still bored. And depressed, too. I wonder if they'll find the soap in part three. Soap? You know, zestfully clean. Damn. Apparently, we have to go back and watch part one. Getting to know the backstories of Hugh and Loretta when they call the difference. Hugh and Loretta? I'm pretty sure part one was all about the therapist getting his license and picking out a nice, featureless, wood-panelled office. I think Hugh just needed to go back to the 50s when Boring was in. He's not a 60s man. Well, folks, that's all the boredom we have to work with today. We'll be back to watch parts 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 later. You might be, but I certainly won't be back.